Yeah, football is where we begin the sports max zone today. Action in the Ren Nephew Jamaica Premier League nearing fever pitch as teams jostle for positions with just five match weeks to go before the playoffs begin. Let's first have a look at the match week 22 fixtures, and uh, those will include the matches you'll see in Asterisk, which are the Sportsmax live matches. Tivoli, Dunbar Holden, and Harborview against Malines. That's a double header on Sunday, and the Monday game between Dunbar Holden. The Monday game is Tivoli against. Um, I'll tell you who that would be in a moment. Um, Portmore Waterhouse, Humble Anvere, Mount Pleasant Cavalier, Montego Bay United, Treasure Beach are the other matches on tap. Yeah, there is a repeat there of the Monday, Tivoli, Dunbar Holden thing, Sunday and Monday. So we'll, we'll fix that in a moment. Uh, a key developing story is a race for the top six places with Dunbar Holden, Waterhouse and Montego Bay United all having their sights on the last playoff spot. Let's keen on the top eight of the table and see how that is looking at the moment. Mount Pleasant, a point ahead of Cavalier, who missed the opportunity to go top yesterday in a 2-2 draw with uh, Arnett Gardens. Tivoli Gardens are five points off the lead in third spot. So are Portmore, who are fourth, but with an inferior goal difference to Tivoli Gardens. Arnett, Dunbar Holden complete the top six spots and Waterhouse and Montego Bay United just outside the top six playoff uh, position looking for a place in the playoffs. And uh, pretty um, key remaining matches remaining because it would be very interesting if Waterhouse doesn't get there because they are perennial playoff uh, contenders, Waterhouse. So with us to discuss the exhilarating race and more is Sportsmax football analyst Lige Williams. Lige, we want to talk about this race for the last playoff spot because it will mean a lot to the two teams. But can we start first by a comment on the Mount Pleasant Cavalier clash, the top two clashing this weekend. Um, Cavalier had won the first round when they met. Um, it could be the key this key result to who actually becomes regular season champions. How, how important is this fixture to both teams? I think it's more important for the psychology, for like how the psychological aspect of it. So Cavalier won the first battle. We all know that Mount Pleasant got the better of Cavalier in the Premier League final last season. So psychologically, I think going into the playoffs, if Cavalier were to beat Mount Pleasant twice, going into the playoffs, I think he would give Cavalier the psychological edge going into if they were to play Mount Pleasant again in the final. So Cavalier, I think they'll be going pretty hard to win this game. Mount Pleasant, they won their last game against Waterhouse, missing nine or ten players. So I'm not quite sure if all of those players will be returning immediately into the starting lineup or into the squad. So I know it will be a different contest for them. but. Definitely, on a, in a psychological way, I, I think Cavalier, it means much more to them than Mount Pleasant. Yeah, and I, I see they're on a 14-game unbeaten run, Cavalier. Joint best unbeaten streak with Portmore at the moment, but neither of them are top of the table. But I guess that tells something about their consistency and how, how steady they've been. Yeah, and I, it also goes to say the amount of draws that they've had as well. Portmore lead the league with eight draws, I believe, so, and Cavalier aren't too far behind. I think they have six, so I do think that this team both teams as do think that they have a couple of attacking kinks that they maybe need to sort out and they will sort them out I think because they have the quality to do so especially in the playoffs when the games won't be as frantic in terms of the tempo but Mount Pleasant proved last week without their players that I still think that they're the best team going into the playoffs I still think they're the best team in the island so yeah a lot of quality in the top six and there's going to be a really good race to see who's going to join these top teams. Right, and a quick word on Kylie Aubrey. I had him on in case you missed it this week, and I asked him about this clash, and he said, just be aware he will be ready, because I asked him, I was like, what can I look forward from you this week? And he's like, just know I'll be ready. You know, so he's excited. He's a Trini player playing now for Mount Pleasant. Your thoughts on him? Yeah, I think he's a really quality player. I, I was on the show previously, and I said that I think he's one of the best 1v1 wingers in the league. Mount Pleasant have been hooving up all of that talent in terms of Daniel Green, Devante Campbell as well, so and Kimoni Bailey, so they have some of the best 1v1 wingers in the league. But Avery, I think he hasn't been getting the consistent start so far. Yeah. So when he comes off of the bench, he's been making a real impact, getting in crosses, beating his man. I think once he continues to do that, the eventually the contributions, goal contributions will flow. So yeah, I think he's a quality player and he'll add a lot or is going to continue to add a lot to this Mount Pleasant outfit. Yeah. yeah, okay. Well, let's have a look now closely 
Lejet, what the contending teams for that layoff, uh, last playoff spot have to do because the run into the end of the regular season is critical to how this may go. And when I look at the matches ahead, uh, there are some teams that appear to have uh, an easier run in uh, than, than the others. Don Beholden having the toughest run in here for sure because in Tivoli and the Cavalier, they are teams in the top five and the orange colored Montego Bay United and, and Waterhouse are playoff competitors. So of the five games they have remaining, you could reasonably think that they have four tough ones among them. Waterhouse having just two tough ones in Portmore and Don Beholden and Montego Bay having just two tough ones in Don Beholden and, and Tivoli Gardens. And uh, that is not to say that other teams can't be tough, but we're just looking at the position of the teams in the league and based on their form and what they've produced so far this season, it does appear that Don Beholden has the, the toughest running of them all. But I guess you could say that they're at the moment best place to get in because they're already there. Yeah, it's a, it's a good thing that they do have the buffer of the extra three points ahead of these teams because, as you mentioned, it's some really tough games. Tivoli this weekend, I, I think, if you, if you look at it, Tivoli are going to play both Dumbo Holding and Montego Bay United, but when they're playing them, I think is extremely important as well because they'll be playing this Tivoli team now as Tivoli are trying to have a little outside shot to get into the top two. But then when they play, when Tivoli were to play, or if when... When they're going to play Montego Bay United, it will be the last game of the season. Maybe Tivoli won't have everything to play for at that moment in time. So it could be an easier game yeah. for Montego Bay United at that point in time. So I think the, the fixtures definitely favor Montego Bay United. They are five points away, but especially considering the fact that Dumbo Holding will have to play both Waterhouse and Montego Bay United, I think that five points can be clawed back extremely easily. Yeah, um, we have to point out, though, that the current form of Don Beholden is pretty impressive. They've gone three wins on the trot, which they haven't been able to do for a long period this yeah. season. So it does appear as if Don Beholden are, are peaking at, at the right time. And they're scoring goals as yeah. well, most importantly. And I think just judging off of the quality of the goals that they scored against Harborview in their last game, it showed that they're finally understanding, I think, what Lenny Hyde wants them to do in terms of the slick interplay in and around the box, how they play in the midfield as well, progressing the ball through the thirds pretty well also. So I do think that they're coming into form, especially on a goal-scoring front at the right time, but they're going to be coming up against some really tough teams, teams that are very stout defensively, Tivoli, Garns, Waterhouse. And I do think that Montego Bay United, although they haven't gotten the wins over the past two game weeks, they played Mount Pleasant and Portmore, two of the best teams in the competition. And they took the lead in both of those games and relinquished them. In the Portmore game, they relinquished it in the 87th minute, I believe. So pretty unlucky on their end not to get a win out of one of those two games. And I do think that Montego Bay United are in some good form as well. Waterhouse, they have some attacking issues, but I think they'll be much better this week than last week because they'll get back Andre Fletcher, who was on national duty. So it, it's three teams that are, I think all of them can go into the top six. It's going to be a really close race going down. And what do you think it will come down to? Yeah, I, I, I still think that will the be when they, yeah, when they play against each other, especially because all of them have to play against each other at some point, and especially when it comes down to Dumbo in having to play both of them and having to play two teams in the top five as well, I think they could falter there because Dumbo Holding haven't necessarily been the best team when playing against teams in above them, so that could be an issue as well. So I think... In terms of the, the fixtures, Montego Bay United has the most favourable fixtures. But Waterhouse, if they were to catch form as well in the middle, seeing that they're only three points off and Montego Bay United are five points off, that could be the deciding factor yeah. as well. I'm intrigued by this Montego Bay United roster, uh, Lish, because we know the history of Montego Bay United from they were SIBA in the 80s and 90s and so on, a, a real powerhouse in uh, Western football in Jamaica. and. Uh, I look at their roster now and I get the feeling that if they had started the season with this roster, they probably would have been in a better position because there were some January transfer introductions that significantly boost the quality of their game and their results. They haven't lost the game since late January, Montego Bay United. And um, it just seems that they have a roster now that could challenge, but the roster was assembled mid-season. Yeah, I agree with you. But, you know, coincidentally, a lot of people like to say the phrase attack is the best form of defense and in the case of Montego Bay United I have to agree with them because 
with Montego Bay United, a lot of the players that they brought in in January are attackers. You mentioned Owen Gordon, Brian Brown, for example, um, um, JJ, uh, as he's affectionately known down there as well. So a, a lot of quality players that in the attacking sense, but I think their midfield and their defence has really been stepping up down, as, down the stretch when they haven't been conceding goals, mm -hmm. as many goals as they were before at least. And they have been grinding out some results. So yeah. I do think that having the attack and having the leadership of some of these players who have been there, yeah. they have Owen Gordon, as I said, who has been the Jamaica Premier League top scorer, Brian Brown as well. So I do think that the leadership yeah. in accordance with what they've been producing on the field, that's led to them being more strong yeah. defensively as well. Pro Pro Producer Ramon is reminding me that while I suggest that they haven't lost a game since late January, they did lose one on the field to Umberland, but they got it in the... Stewards, you you might say, because yeah. of, there was an ineligible player for Humble. Yeah, so they, the, they did have that defeat, but it's three points. Yeah, those things can, can buoy a team on as well because yeah. they're saying, okay, we didn't play this well, yeah. we, we got the loss. Or maybe that game wasn't a televised one, maybe Montego Bay United played the better football on that day yeah, yeah. and Humble got a bit lucky. So I think getting that result could have even said, all right, we're going to do this now. And then immediately after those two, that result, they played against Monte, uh, Mount Pleasant yeah. and Portmore United and got two good draws. So. I, I think it hasn't tilted their confidence whatsoever. And Montego Bay United are in really good form as well. Yeah, can you talk to us, Lij, about Waterhouse's inconsistency this season? Because I said at the start of the segment that it would look really weird to see the playoffs without Waterhouse. They are perennial playoff um, competitors, Waterhouse. But their their season has been so fluctuating, you know, bad bad weeks, good weeks, and they just have no steadiness. Yeah, it was a similar thing last season as well when they were struggling to get into the playoffs, didn't get there in the end. So I think when it comes down to Waterhouse, it, it's a tactical issue. I, I, I love Marcel Gale. I think he's a fantastic coach. But tactically, I do think that they have their issues. You know, they don't have a lot of width, especially when Andre Fletcher isn't in the team. And even when he is in the team, Denardo Thomas on the other side doesn't keep the width, width effectively because he likes to drift in. So does Andre Fletcher. So I think they have a width issue and that clogs the middle and that makes it, them easier to defend, especially when they're not zipping the ball around as well as they usually do. So tactically, I think that they need to do one of two things, which is either to get with or maintain with, or they need to start playing on the transition a bit quicker and try and get more balls into Javain Bryan because he's a league's top scorer, joint top scorer. And even in that game against Mount Pleasant last weekend, all of the shots that he have were really snapshots. So I think they need to get him more service. They need to get the ball in between the lines quicker. They need to get on the transition quicker and they need to hold with better. And I think that could be their formula for success. Yeah, and with the fixtures that they have coming up, do you think it will be an uh, easy route for them? I don't think so. I think that they have, although Dumbo Holding have the toughest fixtures, I think they're in the best form, especially with scoring goals and winning games. And that's going to continue. Montego uh, Bay has the and, easiest fixtures. And Montego Bay has the easiest fixtures. I think Waterhouse are somewhere in the middle. I wouldn't be surprised if if they were the team that were at the bottom of the pile of these three these three teams yeah. going into the playoffs. Mm. Yeah, I, I just wanted to emphasize Waterhouse's unsteadiness by the fact by mentioning the fact that they have only recorded back to back wins once so far this season, rounds two and three. And they haven't been able to do that. And for a team with Waterhouse's quality to be able to, to not be able to score more than two wins back-to-back -back weeks should be very worrying for coach Marcel Gale. Yeah, but I, I, I still do think that he is doing a lot with the squad that he has at his disposal. They've lost a lot of players. You think about someone like Shaquille Bradford who has gone on to score 10 league goals this season for Harborview and Mount Pleasant where he is right now. He isn't there anymore. Yes, they replaced him well with Javain Bryan. But I think if you look across the squad, they lost Ramon Howell as well to Mount Pleasant. So that's a leadership. That's leadership in addition to being one of the best midfielders in the league. So they've lost a lot of players, and their older players, you know, maybe like a Keithy Simpson, maybe isn't doing the job that he used to could do. But you know, he still has to be in there for his leadership, and he probably still has more quality than the other players. So yeah. I, I think it's a tough spot for them to be in. I don't think that they have the best squad, and I think that they're performing pretty well with the squad that they have. But as I mentioned, there are still some tactical issues that they could fix that they're getting wrong at this current moment. Yeah, every time you talk to Lenny Hyde, the Dunbar Holden coach, post-match, he keeps making references to training and, and needing the players to put more out in training. And 
there is even a hint that maybe some of them aren't turning up for training as regular, regularly as, as they should. Um, do you get that sense that, that the Don Beholden roster isn't, isn't being as disciplined as Coach Lenny Hyde wants them to be? You know, Sir Lance, it's actually really good that you said that to ask that question because when you do a Don Beholden match live, you work on a Don Beholden match live and you're in the commentary booth, you know Lenny Hyde, if, if anyone knows Lenny Hyde, seen him when he's coaching, he's always sitting down, relaxing. Yeah. This is the first season I've ever seen him just <laughs> up. He's up. Uh, I, I remember in the game that they played a couple of weeks ago at Draxall, they won't end up winning the game comfortably, yes, against my Lions. But when it came down to it, especially when they were training at halftime, weren't they? <laughs> no, no, not at this occasion. Okay, they weren't. But yeah. during the game, he was, yeah. you saying, I, I told you this in training last week, left, move the ball, left, move the ball, <laughs> left. And that's not something that Lenny Hyde usually does. So I think you asking that question just goes to show that it's it's being seen that maybe they don't look the best prepared coming into games. Because even when you look at it, a lot of their goals come in the second half of games. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's when Lenny Hyde and his coaching staff would make those adjustments, yeah. point out the weaknesses of the opposing team, and that's when his team would begin to flow. So if they're going to come into games being a bit underprepared, that's going to harm them when they're facing the better teams and maybe that's what has been happening because yeah. they have struggled against the better teams so far this season and they're going to have to fix that issue starting this weekend and Before going the forward. Game. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. That, that's a very good question. Yeah, to, to, to be more pointed in the uh, point that I was making, uh, didn't he not start with Nelson in a recent game? Yeah. He didn't start with him yeah. and he was his, he's their best Goal scoring at the very least, yeah, and 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 he came on and scored a lot yeah. of goals, and that that yeah, a hat trick and an assist, yeah. and I I think that was a moment when I think Lenny wanted to make Nelson realize that he needs more out of him, um, but if he isn't giving what he wants in training, then he'll probably not start. Yeah, and, he, and that was I think a, an illustration of the point that we were making. Yeah, and Lenny Hyde is a disciplinarian after all, you know he. He, he see, he's a very easygoing guy to the eye, but we know that when it comes down to his football, he takes yeah. it very seriously. So that's not a surprise. And I'm sure he has full confidence in his squad that even yeah. someone of Nicholas Nelson's prowess, if he's not playing, he can get much more out of other players as well. Maybe yeah. even a Marlon Allen who has come in and got, gotten on the score yeah. sheet as well, playing well. So yeah, yeah Dumbledore in our quality squad, but it's a good point he made maybe about them not being as prepared yeah. as they need to be going into games. Yeah, and uh, just a correction, not three assists, but he, he he had three assists and not he didn't have a hat trick of goals. Yeah, he no, had he, a hat trick he, of assists. Yeah, and he got he got a hat trick the following week. So. Oh yes, okay. he did. So he he is in and, very and, good and, form. And their goalkeeper. Looks fitter than I've seen him in about six or seven years. D Damien Hyatt, yes. yeah, yeah. He, he, he's, he looks, he's, playing, he's playing pretty well, springing around. Yes. Um, he wasn't tested too much against Harbour View. Yes. But I know in the in the games, I, I still do see some defensive frailties in Dumbo Hole, especially in that Mullines game where yeah. they had to come from behind and yeah. win 4 2, I believe. Yeah. So he hasn't been working too much. And usually when he has to work, it's him <laughs> picking the ball out of his net because his defense are allowing some really easy chances to come to him. But yeah, yeah he does look pretty good this season. Yeah, yeah. I, I, on another show, we'll talk about Harborview's woes because... That, that, I, would, that I, would take up the entire yeah, 15, I, I, 20 I, I, minutes. I'm having really. a little sympathy here for Ludlow Bernard, who <laughs> uh, is having, you know... Well, he doesn't have much here at the moment because I was about to say he's losing here, <laughs> trying to deal with the Harborview's um, treacherous form. Is that um, what happened, Sir Lance? You used to coach a team? No, 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 I didn't. Is it, is it, is it my genes to not have here? Oh, okay, I, yeah, I it's, just wondered. It's hereditary. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that is our uh, Premier League segment. Uh, Ray and Nephew Jamaica Premier League getting really, really hot as we get to the closing weeks of the uh, regular season and look toward the playoffs. We go to break. We have a lot more football to talk on the Sports Bank Zone and a lot else as well. Back on the other side of the break.